Hello, everybody. How are you guys doing tonight? Yeah. Good. Okay, I don't have a fancy PowerPoint presentation or anything. Um, I usually just like to get up here and talk and give you guys as much value as I possibly can. So what I typically like to do is give a very quick version of my, my spiel, my story, and then uh, just get into any questions that you guys might have because I feel like you guys are in an exciting time of your life. A lot of people are getting ready to graduate. What, what are the years in here? Do we have freshmen? Okay, a handful. Sophomores? Juniors? And seniors. Cool. So we have a really pretty even mix. Awesome. Well, I know that, like, I went to the University of Florida. I love my time here. Is everybody enjoying their time at UF? <laughs> You're at, like, one of the best schools ever. Um, Cool. How many of you have heard my little spiel before? How many of you guys have heard of New Scooters for Less before? Good. Marketing is working. <laughs> All right. Well, excellent. Well, I'm going to give you just a very brief version of my story um, and tell you a little bit about how New Scooters for Less came to be. And I'm actually running a new company now, which is called Repaint the Wall. It's actually a digital media agency. We refer to it as an unagency because we feel like it's very unique, unorthodox, untraditional, just very outside of the box. And, um, and so that's my next venture. Um, I, have been what, I have been for the last 15 years the COE, the chief of everything at New Scooters for Less. I've now officially handed that title to a very, very good friend of mine, a person who's been in my company for years. And so now New Scooters for Less is being run by my entire team. And uh, I t have taken on a founder status, so I'm not in the day-to-day -day at the scooter dealership anymore. I'm spending 100% of my time on this new company. So today I wanted to talk a little bit about, you had it up there before, right? Opportuni opportunity and execution. Um, because here I was as a college student, I'm going to date myself a little bit, and I'm not old, I'm only 36, um, but I went to the University of Florida from 2000 to 2004, and I decided to go to the business school. This building did not exist when I went to school here, <laughs> but um, I, was, I used to live on the west side of campus on uh, 20th Avenue. Does anybody live down that way? Anybody? Okay, good. It's, tra it's traffic hell down there, at least it was when I went to school. But I lived at University Terrace West, and I used to go out to this bus stop, and I would wait for this bus to pick me up and take me to school. And this bus, as it was coming down, it would drive right on by with those big words across the top that said, full bus. And I was like, oh my gosh, this is terrible. I can't get to class. Luckily for me, back then, I was able to watch all of my classes on Cox Cable, Channel 5, just to set my VCR. Again, I'm dating myself. <laughs> I used to set my VCR, record my classes, and I was able to watch my classes on you know, video cassette at, during that time and, and stay caught up. But um, you know, trying to be the good student, I was like, I want to go to the live lecture. I want to go to class. I want to you know, go to school. And uh, I just never could. So it was kind of like one of those moments for me. I was like, man. This is a problem. How many other students are having this problem? How many of you guys have done like the career showcase? Anybody? Okay. I hated it. <laughs> I don't know how you guys felt about it, but I was the kid who had, you know, had my suit and tie, had my resume in hand, and I was going to all these recruiters and I was shaking hands and they would ask me, so Colin, why do you want to work for our company? And I was thinking to myself, oh my gosh, I don't. <laughs> and um, so along with that, I, I just realized that this was me, like blue jeans, long sleeve tee, not going to be a suit and tie kind of guy. Didn't see myself answering to those people asking me why I wanted to work for their company. I didn't see myself working for their company. So I felt like I didn't fit the mold. Um, I don't know how it is now, but in 2000, 2004, like the track was graduate high school, go to college get a job working for somebody else. I think we're finally breaking that mold. I realized that I was not going to be one of those individuals that I was not ever going to work for somebody else. And I recognize these opportunities, right? Full bus driving by the University of Florida, building buildings like this on whatever property they had. Uh, most of that property is parking lots. <laughs> so as they continue to build new and new, you know, new buildings, they were on top of parking lots. When I was at UF, 
I needed 60 credits to get a decal to park at the commuter lot. As soon as I got to 60 decals, they bumped that up to 90. As soon as I got up to 90, they bumped that up to 120. You needed 120 credits. You had to be a graduate student to park on campus. And that just gave you the opportunity to drive in circles for hours trying to find a parking place. So I recognize this as a problem and the opportunity was to solve it, right? So I decided to start a scooter company. <laughs> Back, and I actually found out this statistic from another class who was introducing me first, and I didn't know these statistics, but in 2004, roughly 570 or so scooter decals were sold. And, the, and, so, and that was motorcycle and scooter park decals, which are still one and the same. In 2017, it was about 6,800. So we started a company that has literally changed the culture of an entire college town the University of Florida, and we are the example for college towns all across America. This is definitely a model that's starting to take off. Scooters have definitely helped other colleges. Like it's, it's funny seeing how many people have copied our model and what we do here and are trying to replicate the scooter model, the university model at other college towns. So it's really, really cool to kind of see that come to fruition and to, to have played such a significant role in that. Um, and it's nothing that I ever intended. It was simply, I want to help college students. That was the opportunity. I didn't want anybody to deal with what I was dealing with. So here we are, 15 years in March is our anniversary. So it's crazy that it's been that long, but New Scooters for Less is one of the top dealerships in the country. We're, we are the number one dealer for companies like Genuine Scooter Company. Um, that was in 2017 and in 2018, and um, it's just really, really exciting to see how much it's grown. With that, started a new company <laughs> last year. And so kind of like summarizing that, it was really just recognizing that opportunity, right? And then going out and solving it. And I've very much done that the same way in 2018 as I did back in 2004. Last year, when we were named the number one genuine scooter dealer in the country, um, I told my in-house marketing team, my video team, I said, look, I was like, guys, this is really cool. Like, we should make a promo video to highlight this achievement. We had been vlogging. We kind of been showing behind the scenes of the dealership. That was the things that we were doing all the time. But I said, well, let's try something new. Let's make a promo video. So we made this promo video. And I, my objective was, Hey, let's make this promo video. When all the college kids come back in, you know, in August for school, what we'll do is we'll promote that video to college students and say, hey, come buy your scooter from the, not the number one dealership in the city, but the number one dealership in the country. And we were going to target that video to college students and hopefully sell a lot of scooters. Just to kind of give you guys an idea of what our roller coaster ride of, of business is like. In the month of August, we will sell about 300 scooters. <laughs> this month, or like a month like February, we might sell 30 <laughs> if we get lucky. So it's very seasonal, right? So August is just insane. But I was like, all right, I want to create a video that's going to really promote New Scooters Flesh during that time. My video team did an excellent job. It was a, a great promo. And I said, you know, what, you know what guys, this is really cool, but I wanna try something. This is all about new scooters for less. This video is all about new scooters for less. So instead, why don't we cut out new scooters for less? Let's make a second cut of this video. Let's, let's take Genuine Scooter Company, who is our distributor. Let's take their information, let's take their logo and insert it and make it look like we made it for them. That way, the entire dealer network of dealerships across the country could benefit from this. And they're like, all right. <laughs> so they did it and the video was great. I took the video, I sent it to our rep at Genuine and I said, hey guys, this is a free gift from me to you. Send this to all your dealers. They can put it up on their screens inside their showroom. They can put it on social media. They can use it to show off your product and that's only gonna mean good things for them. It's gonna mean good things for you. So here you go. They emailed me back and they said, this is awesome. How much would it cost to do this for every scooter we sell? 
24 hours later, me not knowing anything about making video work or I don't like I don't I don't know. <laughs> I'm like, how much are you willing to pay? Um, you know, but it, 24 hours later, we signed an agreement to make videos for all of their scooters. And then when I recognized, like, hey, now we're making money off media work, maybe this is something we should explore. And then, <laughs> right around the same time, I actually had a friend of mine who was like, hey, Colin, like, I have this apartment complex that, that my friend owns. You know, he's... You know, he's been marketing to college students for a long time. He used to be able to put a sign out in front that says for rent, and they used to fill up the place. But now he's having a hard time. You know, he's having a really, really hard time filling this place. There's so much competition. There's so many student housing complexes. You know, do you mind taking a couple hours and just sitting and talking to him about, about ways to market? And I was like, yeah, sure. I'd be happy to. So I spent a couple hours, met with him, and I gave him all of these ideas. I was like, ah, oh, if, I, if I owned your complex, this is what I would do. This is what I would do. This is what I would do. And what ended up happening was, like, by the end of that, as I was reflecting on that conversation with him, I'm thinking to myself, man, this guy's this guy's a general contractor. He was adding on units to his complex. I'm like, this guy's building this out. He is busy. I was like, I'm gonna, I'm gonna be lucky if this guy executes on 10% of what I just told him. And so I sent him a follow-up and I said, hey, I don't know if you would consider this. I'd be happy to execute this stuff for you. You know, would you like me to write you a proposal? And he was like, yeah, sure, why don't you do that? I was like, okay, so I wrote up a proposal. It was for one year's worth of stuff to do over the course of a year in terms of marketing, media, video, Facebook advertising, Instagram advertising, all the things that I had done to build new scooters for less. And it was a six figure proposal. It was a lot of money. He said no. <laughs> like, ah, that's a lot of money. No. But what ended up happening was a couple months later, we get to like June. And now we're two months before school starts. And now he has 55 empty bedrooms that haven't filled up. So now there's a little bit of, you know, I really need to fill these bedrooms. And so I ended up, that ended up being my first Gainesville client. And I said, look, like we can help you fill this. I actually did it on a commission basis. I was like, you know, give us X dollars per room and we'll do this. And, and we ended up filling all 55 bedrooms before school started. And so that was really, that was like seeing this opportunity, writing a proposal and just, and really going after it. And that, those things really launched the company. That's, those are the things that made me say, okay, this is the opportunity. We can do this. And um, was, in addition to that, I know like you had to talk to Angela about maybe talking about the podcast a little bit. <laughs> Last year we started a podcast. And, and I'm very, very passionate about this podcast. I know it sounds like I got so much going on, right? I got like Scooter Shop, got this media agency, got a podcast. There's, it, there's definitely a lot happening in my life and that's what excites me as an entrepreneur because every single day that I live is just something completely different. On Tuesdays I get to wake up and I get to interview some fantastic business owner, somebody that sold their business for nine figures. You know, just like insanity thing. People, I'm meeting people I never thought I would have met simply because I've asked them to come into my little studio that I made and interview them for a podcast. Um, but I'm gonna spend just a couple minutes talking about the podcast because the reason behind it is super important. When I was a kid, I used to like, my first 18 years were bouncing all over the place because I was an Air Force brat. When I got to the University of Florida from you know, my years from 2000 to 2004, those four years were the longest I had ever lived in one place. So by the end of those four years, Gainesville was home. Like this is, this is home. And that's why I decided, hey, I wanna stay. I wanna build this company. I wanna build new scooters for less. So now I've been here for 18 years and I've just absolutely fallen in love with the city. It's weird because I feel a lot of times there's this University of Florida bubble and that you guys as students don't realize the opportunity that's on the other side of 13th Street right there. <laughs> and 
there's just so there's just so many incredible companies within this city and so my purpose behind the podcast is to do a few different things one is to take you guys top eight university talent and show you that there's opportunities to one if you want to build companies build companies if you want to work for incredible companies work for incredible companies they're right here you don't have to go to the big city in fact i would tell you that so many of my team members have worked for me part-time at new scooters for less while they're in school then they're like all right i'm done with school they leave they go to new york they go to san francisco they go to all these places because there's this just perspective of like oh that's like the life i want they go and they come right back and they come back and work for me full time because they realize that the opportunity to one, have a better living, a much more affordable living, the opportunity to save, the opportunity to build their futures is, is right here. And so I'm really using the podcast to, to show that, to show you guys the opportunities that there are right here in Gainesville and get, and I know that I, I don't expect all you know, 50,000 students to, <laughs> to stay right here in Gainesville, but if I could get a larger percentage of you guys to do so, you're going you're gonna to love it and the companies here are going to love it. So that's definitely one of the objectives. The other is to show off businesses to each other. It's crazy how many businesses here don't realize of the other businesses here in town. So it's really about building relationships and connections. And then the other is to recruit. I want to recruit big companies, small companies, anybody who wants to build, bring their company and bring it right here to Gainesville, Florida, because this place is just super special. And if you want this, if you want the big city life, guess what? Jacksonville is an hour and a half away. You want to go to the beach? St. Augustine, it's really close. Got Orlando, Tampa. If you really want to go to Tallahassee, I mean, you can, but, <laughs> but like, it, even it's not too far away. So, so that was something that I created last year just to really show off Gainesville. And luckily for us, it's definitely, you know, it's got a, a good grasp. We've only done about 40 episodes and there's a lot of buzz around it. There's a lot of sharing of the videos. We have it on, we have video production as well as uh, the audio. It's on iTunes, Spotify, it's any, anywhere you can find a podcast, it's there. Um, it's called the WHOA, so whoa, G&V podcast. And um, I'm super excited to see where, where it goes. But that's my very long story in a very short time. I can get as granular as you guys want to about details about the company, um, companies, but I would love to do whatever I can to provide you guys value, answer any questions you have. I mean, you're, you know, for everybody getting ready to go into the real world, like whatever it is, I would love to answer those for you. So does anybody have any questions? Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah. What was the biggest challenge at first? Um, just with your first company, New Scooters for Less, maybe something you didn't expect about being an entrepreneur or starting a business? Very good question. Um, the biggest challenge that I faced was uh, the split with my business partner. So in 2004, I had a business partner and we were together for two years and we actually split in January of 2006. Um, and he actually had came to me saying, hey, I want to split the company. And that was something that when I started the business with him, I had never thought through. I never thought of that being a possibility. Um, what did that look like? And it's very much a divorce in business. You're sitting across the table. You each have an attorney. You're fighting over couches, assets. You know, you're fighting over the business. And, and that was probably the biggest challenge. Um, and of course, me during that time, I'm young, not as mature as I am today. So I probably didn't handle it as well as I could have because I was very much like, I'm going to destroy your face. <laughs> like that was my attitude in it. I was like, I want to stick it to this guy. I'm going to show you. And I mean, of course, he was a UF graduate too. <laughs> you know, he's, he's a gator. In fact, he's, he's in the business. He actually has a wholesale scooter company. He actually imports the products from, you know, from overseas and into the country. And now, New Scooters for Less is a dealer of his because that relationship has healed and is made full circle. Um, but in 2006, I wanted to rip his head off. Yeah.
That's a very good question. So as an entrepreneur, like kind of us students who are getting ready to graduate, going into that kind of lifestyle can be pretty daunting and something you do say, you know, August is a great month, but maybe February is really hard. How do you kind of deal with that in just staying confident in your business and being able to perform and succeed? Yeah. And so looking back at that time, we didn't really understand or know the seasonality, right? So those are just kind of things that we figured out along the way and we still have figured it out along the way. Um, the, the most daunting part of it was again, being on track to go into the real world, follow, like going working for a company. You know, when I told my dad, hey, I want to start my own business, he was like, no. <laughs> it was very much like, I, I understand, like you wanna own your company, I get it, but you know, go work for a company, go have benefits, save some money, you know, and then later on, you know, if you wanna do that, sure, do that. But I looked at it as, I'm 21 years old. I don't have a wife, I don't have kids, I don't have a mortgage, I don't have any of those things. If I, you know, would I, if, you know, here 18 years later, if I would, decided to go work for a company and I had this steady paycheck, would, and a wife, kids, mortgage, like would I leave this full-time job and risk that to go start my own company? I don't know if the answer would be yes, because there's just more at stake. So I looked at it as like, hey, like I understand the way you feel, but I'm gonna go do this. Um, my dad hates that I tell this story, but like I got the biggest motivational speech of my life, which was when you fail in six months, don't come crying to me for money. And you can imagine what that's like hearing that from your father. Again, hey dad, if you're watching. Hey. Um, <laughs> dad, if you're watching, I'm super sorry. Love you. Um, <laughs> But like, yeah, so he totally hates that I like, that I tell that story. Um, but it is one of those things. I, to, to be honest, without it, without that story, without him doing that, I don't know if I would have succeeded. I think sometimes those things happen in life where it was one of those defining moments. I'm definitely an entrepreneur that rides with a chip on my shoulder. You tell me that I can't do something, I'm gonna stick it to you and I'm gonna show you that I can. Um, so that that was motivation and the same thing with my ex-business partner you know i think in a lot of ways he felt like i couldn't do it after we split i'm like all right i'm gonna show you. i'm not i'm not only gonna beat you but i'm gonna like build the best and biggest and greatest scooter dealership in the country like that was my mentality um sometimes that's probably a little unhealthy <laughs> i don't recommend having a ruthless mentality and, and I'm not that way like I'm very very rounded and, and I like love uh, my dad's my biggest supporter today you know what I mean so um, it just took a little bit of convincing in fact like later that year it's funny because I went back home for for the Christmas uh, holiday and he was, he was asking me he's like oh you know so how's the new company going I'm like yeah good and, you know we've brought in a few investors he's like oh, investors like what's that look like I'm like oh yeah well we got some money and like, and these were loans and I'm like, oh, we got some loans and you know, we're paying them X amount of dollars on their money. So they're making some interest on us. And my dad was like, well, I want to do that. <laughs> so a few months later, my dad became one of our investors and he's one of my biggest supporters today. So it just took a little bit of convincing, but, but you can imagine as a college student entering, you know, the real world, starting your own business and having that feeling of like, oh my gosh, like, is this a mistake? Is this the right thing to do? But I think sometimes you just have to do what's right for you. You can't listen to all of the outside voices. There's going to be so much judgment. There's going to be so many people judging you. And I think in, I think in the world, no matter if it's 2004, 2019, we get obsessed about what other people think of us. And when we do that, that's what holds us back. So you cannot be worried about what other people think. You got to do what's right for you. And, and if you believe in something so much, just like I believed in the opportunity that was New Scooters for Less, you got to go all in and you just got to do it. And you just got to have faith that it's going to work out long term. Any other questions? Yes. So how has being an entrepreneur empowered you to live the kind of life that you want? And what advice would you give people like us who may or may not become entrepreneurs to live the life we want? Um, Being an entrepreneur makes you really poor. 
uh, it takes a lot longer to get where, you know, I think a lot of people have this flawed perspective of I'm going to build Facebook and I'm going to be billions, right? <laughs> like the odds of that actually happening are like 0. 0.000000000012. <laughs> like it's like you know those are unicorns and we we see and we hear about the unicorns um, entrepreneurship is lonely like a lot of people don't understand that like you can't like you just there's been many times where I've been curled curled up in the bathroom locked the door crying but it's like on the floor it's like oh my gosh this is great like people don't understand your team doesn't understand the stress of making payroll on Friday and you don't want to tell them. You don't want them to worry. You don't want, again, people having steady paychecks. You don't want them to be concerned. You don't want them to like leave and go find a, another job because they'll be like, oh, I'm not getting paid on Friday. You know, like you don't want to create that. So like it's just being an entrepreneur is super, super tough. It's weird because in 2019, being an entrepreneur is cool. There's this perspective of like, hey, like, you own your own business, you're an entrepreneur. The word entrepreneur is cool, and and like one of my favorite, one of my favorite entrepreneurs, his name's Gary Vaynerchuk. He always talks about how you know it's easy to go on Instagram and put entrepreneur CEO in your Instagram profile, <laughs> and it's like, okay, like, but what did you really build? You know, like it's there's just a, a very very flawed perspective of what entrepreneurship is. Um, the best thing about it is I get to wear blue jeans tennis shoes and a t-shirt to work every day. <laughs> I get to live, I get to live on my own terms. I don't have to answer to anybody. There's not a single, well, besides like government and some other things. <laughs> I mean, you do gotta listen to some people and you do gotta pay taxes and you do gotta do this stuff. But on the day to day, you get to create your schedule. You get to choose, you get to choose what speaking engagements to go to. You get to choose, you know, where to invest your time, where to invest your money. There, there's definitely a lot of benefits to it. And, and I, can, I couldn't imagine my life any other way. I absolutely love what I do. The fact that I get to even come here and just talk to you guys and, and network with other University of Florida students and, and give back to this university that's given me so much, um, is that in itself is an honor. So um, the best thing about it is, is the opportunity to really make an impact and change the world. Like I wake up every single day. I don't have to be motivated. I'm motivated as soon as my foot hits the door because I know that I'm fulfilling my purpose and my purpose in life is to build others. Yes. Did your major correlate to you wanting to be an entrepreneur? Yeah. Um, so I just got a gen general business administration degree. I was in the business school. Um, it's funny because now, you know, I have classes coming out to the dealership for class. <laughs> it's crazy, you know, I don't know if any of you guys took Professor Rossi's class, but he did Principles of Entrepreneurship for a long time. I know that he's teaching creativity and business now, and, and he, that's probably the best relationship that I have with a professor. Like, I've known him for years. He's been a huge supporter of us. Um, I've spoken in his class multiple times. And, and now, like next fr next Friday, I don't even know Parker Van Hart's class. I don't know what class it is, but they're coming out to the dealership on Friday. So that kind of stuff is really really cool. And, and a lot, yes, so a lot of it happened because of being in the business school. And and I minored in mass communications. I tell you, one of the questions that I get asked all the time is like, how do you find your passion? You know, I don't know. I don't know what to do with my life. And that's okay. Like, if you don't know what you're gonna do with your life, it's okay. I didn't know what I was gonna do when I was in college. I was, January of 2004 is when I went to that career showcase. I like that, I graduated in May of 2004. Like that was like just a few months. I didn't know what I was gonna do with my life. A month, a month and a half later, I started a scooter dealership. I mean, it was that, it was that fast. And, and I thought I was gonna be in the music industry. I used to play trumpet in a local ska band. I used to work at Rock 104, which is now the country Gator 103.7. I used to MC. Um, battle the bands. I used to like work at a recording studio. Like I was going music because that was my passion. I was so passionate about music and the music industry. And so I thought I was going to be working in the music industry. Uh, God just had a different plan. So, and it's cool to see how things have circled back because now I'm I am doing some production stuff. Now I'm running a podcast, <laughs> and I'm very much back in that world again. Any other questions, guys? Yes. One more. 
What are your two favorite podcast guests you've had? If you're gonna listen to two episodes. Oh my gosh. The one that I think would bring you guys a ton of value is, is one with a gentleman named Newell Fox. And he was on the podcast. He actually does, he's an adjunct professor and does some teaching here at the University of Florida, but he's an interview coach. And he talks about resumes. And he talks about in the interviewing process. And he talks about um, unique ways to get your foot in the door and to get that. Because like, the one thing we know is like, hey, there's so many people applying for this one job. Like, how are you gonna stand out? What are you doing to make yourself stand out? So that episode is, is awesome to the point where he's like, yeah, man, let this one person sent, you know, was trying to get in with Jay-Z and they sent the resume in a big giant box and they're trying to get this box through the door. And the only thing in it was a resume, you know? So it's like hearing crazy stories like that that really made this person stand out um, and get the job is, is pretty neat. So that's one. The other is there's a, man, there's, they're all really good, but there's a company here called Phalanx Defense Systems. And the uh, gentleman's name is James Coates. And, and they build like armor. Like, I mean, the guy has Iron Man suits in his facility right here in Gainesville. I mean, he, he has like a museum. He has a museum of like this stuff. But hearing his story about like being homeless and then being, and then being a, being both voted most likely not to succeed in his high school superlatives to hosting his high school reunion at his multi-million dollar company is pretty cool. Yeah. Should I have one more? Um, I was just wondering, you mentioned like growing your people within your company. As an entrepreneur who's kind of like very responsible for, you know, everyone under you, there's not really like a huge kind of corporate to like back you up. How do you really try and grow those people and like maintain the stability that you sort of mentioned? So everything that I do is about, the, is about the culture, it's about the people, right? I can't do what I'm doing without them. So they're the most vital component to everything that I do. Um, and, and the way you do that is just really by, is by building a culture, a culture that of, of caring and, and wanting what's best for them. And I think that's why people have left and then come back because they realize they go and work for somebody else in a big city and they realize that they are just a number and then they, when they were working with me, that they're not, that they're actually a piece of something much bigger than themselves. And that feels really good because it gives them purpose. I mean, even when we have mechanics, like it's easy to be like, oh, you're a scooter mechanic. You fix a scooter. Like, no, that's what you do at other dealerships across the country. At New Scooters for Less, you're ensuring the safety of somebody's son or daughter. That gives that mechanic way more purpose in what they're doing. So it's just the way you build culture around those kind of things. Um, we have, you know, we have 12 core values that really um, build up the decisions that are being made within New Scooters for Less, and that's how we hold our team accountable. Um, but I just, I just try to help people achieve what they want to achieve. Like if you work for me and I know long term that you want to go work for this company or this organization or you want to be your own business, if I'm investing that time into helping you achieve that, you're going to work your ass off for me. You're going to do everything you can to see that I succeed because you know that I want the same for you. And so when you build a culture like that, um, that that's what happens. And so now like New Scooters Plus, like those guys know. I'm not even in that company. I'm not even operating in that company. I'm building this new company, but we're con you know we're constantly making them, you know making them realize that without them, without new scooters for less, I can't have repaint. Like I can't have this new company because that's the portfolio. Like when people say, okay, like what do you do? <laughs> like why should we go with your agency? It's like scooter company like this is what we've done this is who we are you know and so they're the por they're the portfolio so without them i can't i can't have the new agency um at least at least in our present stage maybe that's a little bit different as we grow but um but yeah like it's it's very much that that they are the portfolio yes how do you begin to like take on a role of running a new company when you don't really know anything about that job that is, so I definitely don't know anything about media agency life. <laughs> um, I know a lot about marketing, right? So the, the actual skill involved with showing or helping a company build, 
you know, so with like the apartment complex, for example, I knew exactly what to do because I've done it for new scooters for less. I knew, know how to build community around things. I know how to deliver customer experiences. I know how to target very specifically on Facebook. I know how to go to the University of Florida, buy the email list, upload it to Facebook, target only people who go to the University of Florida and make sure that they're the only ones seeing my message. I know how to do that. A lot of other people don't. And it's only because, again, New Scooter Celeste is the portfolio I've, I've used that that's, that, and actually right now it's my beta tester in a lot of ways. <laughs> It's like when something new comes along and I'm like, oh, that's cool, like maybe I should try that. I'm trying it on my own company first. Um, but I think kind of going back to like entrepreneurship and I just have this confidence. I just, I just, I legitimately believe that I can do anything. So I just start moving forward and then I just start figuring it out. I mean, I literally don't even know like what the right names are for for people in agencies. <laughs> you know, like, ah, oh, is this called a project manager, account manager, videographer? That one's pretty easy. Like, <laughs> you know, like, what are these positions called? And uh, and I think that's okay. In fact, it's it's interesting because when people ask me, like, hey, Colin, I'm thinking about starting a restaurant. You know. What should I do? I say, hey, you know what? Go check out what all the other restaurants are doing and then go do the opposite because we have this expectation of this is what a restaurant looks like. When you change that expectation, it makes you special. It makes you more unique. And so we're not, we're not doing what the other agencies do. And I love, I love all the other agencies here in town. They, you know, I'm friends with all of them, which actually made things a little bit scary as I was kind of coming into this space. Like, I didn't want to ruffle any feathers with friends, people who had agencies. Um, but I'm passionate about marketing and media, and so I was like, I have, to, I have to do this. I have to do this for me. I can't worry about what other people are expecting or, or what other people are saying, so I'm just going to do this. Um, but we're different because we are focusing only on video, social media, and personal branding. Um, we're not building websites. In fact, when people come to us looking for websites, I send it to one of the other agencies. So, that, so that's been good. But they, to answer your question, I don't know. <laughs> I just, just figure it out. I just start going in a direction. Research. Google's good. Hey, Google, what are the positions in media agencies? <laughs> you know what I mean? And you just start figuring it out and piecing it together. Um, that's it. Yeah. What are your goals long term for yourself, for your legacy, or maybe Gainesville in general? Oh, man. That is a great question. Um, I went out to lunch with somebody who was trying to sell me some payroll services not too long ago <laughs> and they asked me they're like so like where, what's what's repaint going to be and without without flinching I was like oh this could easily be a 200 million dollar company with 1500 employees I, didn't, I mean I didn't even think twice I was like that like that's possible um, I don't heck I don't even want to limit myself to 200 million dollars you know what I mean I think it could be much bigger than that um, and then he was like well realistically in five years I was like ah that's so hard like realistically like this should, this should be a $5 million company in five years' time. Um, I actually think it could be bigger. So it's, for me though, more importantly than like big numbers and millions of dollars and like all this, more importantly is making sure that we are living up to the reputation that we're establishing. I wanna make sure that we're able to deliver for, you know, I'm a really good salesperson. I can, if I just went out and gained, I could, I could sell agreements, sell, 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 sell. But if I do that and I'm unable to deliver because I don't have the capacity to deliver on what I've sold, then what are we doing? You know, like it's not going to benefit those companies. We're going to end up hurting our reputation. So I think sometimes you have to be very, very careful about how you scale and how you grow. Um, so for me, I'm always consistently thinking about that. I want to make sure that we're maximizing our capacity and delivering for these clients before I go out and sell the next agreement. Um, long term, I think I will be one of those faces for Gainesville. You know, when you think of iconic name, we think of the Tom Petty's and like just the names that just stick out. Um, when you think of Gainesville, I, I would love to be one of those people, um, but 
it's interesting because when you're really thinking about that, it's not, the way you do that is not by, is not by like trying to soak up as much. It, it's weird, it's like, it's, it's ass backwards <laughs> the way you think about it. Like the way you do that is by actually serving as many people as you possibly can. It's like getting out and doing as much as you can for others. And a lot of that is like, is personal time. It's a lot of one-to-one, -one. it's a lot of free time. It's like, so we have the, biz, my, my schedule's crazy. So from like, I wake up at 4.30 a.m. I usually don't finish till about 10 o'clock at night. Like that, that time is just packed. And I'm, so I'm trying to fill every single second because I want that, I want that, that impact. I want the university, like I want to be one of the, you know, big names that came out of the University of Florida. I would love that. Um, but it's all about serving as many people as you possibly can. And yeah, I'm always, I'm always thinking about that, that legacy. But what it looks like, you know, ultimately I think that's, that's just left up, like God's will. Like what is, what's his plan? Let him do his thing. I'm, I'm just here to serve. You know, I, I'm like, I literally walk around like this a lot of the time. <laughs> like, what do you want me to do? Um, so it's very much just having that faith in why I'm here. I don't want to spend all night. I mean, I will spend all night with you guys, but I know that you guys probably don't want to spend all night. So I'll say thank you very much for letting me come in and speak with you guys tonight. Um, keep working hard. If there's anything that I can ever do for you, let me know. I have some swag and stuff over here. Scooters my phone wallets. I have my business card, which is my like Snapchat code. It goes directly to me. So please get one and, and feel free to email me. Anything I can do to ever help you guys, just let me know, okay? But, but thanks. Oh look who's reaching now. Old friends wanna feature now. They don't work, so they need a free. Ooh, you reaching now from the west side of that old town, but there's no show. So I go down to the open mic, show love to the real ones they know now. Some of y'all don't know now. In a couple months, you gon' find out. Been blowing up from the underground, and they stepping on the landmine now.